Hello YouTube friends. A while ago, a month or so, maybe a little longer, I did a live stream on the channel where I asked people for questions and I answered them in that live stream that went on for a long time, over an hour. Uh, I'll put a link to it uh, here and uh, if you wanted to go back and look. Because one of the questions that someone asked me was, what was the first quilt you made? And in the live stream I said, I could tell you about it, but we'd be going down a very big rabbit hole. Well, today we're going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you about the very first quilt I made, which is this one here. I have it on a sofa in my bedroom, so that's where I am at the minute. I'm up in my bedroom and I'm shooting into the light, so we may have to change position quite soon. So I've just looked back at some photographs uh, of this and I love how on the computer, if you look at a photograph, you can see when it was taken, the date it was taken. And so that when I was constructing this one, it was March 2007. So 12 years ago was when I made my first quilt. So I've taken it off the sofa and I've put it on the bed. And this will be easier, I think, to talk to you because uh, I'm not shooting straight into the light. And you can see with it on the bed, can't you? There's not... It's probably not even a single bed quilt. So up here, here in my bedroom, it's a very sort of quilty place. <laughs> Back on the wall there is the trip around the world quilt I made uh, a number of years ago from K Facet fabric. And on the bed here is my summer quilt. This is the quilt that I'm, it's, it's, it's just a single layer of Liberty, this one. And I made this one uh, maybe nearly 10 years ago. And if anyone's got the book, Kate's Cat Norma, you, I will explain a little bit about how and why I made this quilt. Uh, this is the, uh, if you've got that book and you've read about that, this is the one that I'm talking about here. But today I'm going to tell you about how and why I made this quilt. Now, here's the rabbit hole. <laughs> My mum was a quilter. Uh, she'd made hundreds and hundreds of quilts by the time I made this one. And just bring you in a little bit closer. And I'd never really, I'd sewn loads and knitted and all of those things, but I'd never made a quilt. Now, I got really interested, and you know, the internet's good for that, isn't it? You can find out all sorts of really interesting things. And I started to read about um, the women of G's Bend. Now, they're pretty famous now, um, the, the quilts that have come out of that area of Alabama. And there's not a lot on the internet about them. I'll put what I can find in the description box below. There wasn't a great deal, but there is a big book, which I haven't got. And there is uh, a little bit to whet the appetite, a few pictures and so on. And so if I'm understanding the history correctly, this area of Alabama is in a big loop of river, which is called the G's Bend. And it's, it's not just like a little river with a little bit of land. It's massive. It's enormous loop of river. And uh, the women, uh, the families who lived there were descended from uh, slaves. And these women were pretty isolated from the outside world because they only made a proper road to this area that I'm talking about in the 60s, in the 1960s. So their traditions, which were of hand stitching whatever fabric they could get their hands on, had stayed pretty pure right up until the, you know, the, the late 1900s. And no one had really kind of discovered them. So they were making their uh, hand quilted quilts out of all the flower sacks and the scraps of fabric, which is how, of course, quilting evolved, isn't it? Is to use up every little scrap of fabric. But what I absolutely loved about these quilts, because of course someone discovered them and suddenly, you know, their quilts were on display in museums in New York and all sorts of people were buying them. Um, and these women, you know, became um, uh, n discovered and known about. So books were written and articles and so on. And these women's quilts were displayed to the world. I absolutely loved the way that they put colour together and shape and pattern, which had absolutely no respecter of um, any of the quilting, um, rigid quilting rules that have uh, come about since then. 
So I set about sort of inventing a way to make a quilt along the lines that these women had. And I sat at my sewing machine. I was working still at the time. So any spare time I had, I would sit and cut and sew. Uh, now I constructed it because I saw these pictures and read a little bit about these women. And Alice Williams, that she was the one that I, I was particularly drawn to. It just seemed to me like um, she would be, or, you know, maybe other women too, but this woman, she would be stitching away at this little um, scrap of fabric and then she just cut it in half and turn it round <laughs> and then it would take on a completely different shape. <laughs> so I started to do that and this, is, this was the end result. The backing of it is an old sheet. The middle of it, now don't cringe, quilt police, but the middle of it is a wool blanket which means that if I ever do wash it, and I do, I just lay it in the bath and soak it with warm water and a little bit of detergent and just let it soak like that and then I let it dry. I used to, with the kids used to have a trampoline. I used to just put it on the trampoline to dry, but now I just lay it out outside on a warm day and let it dry that way. The quilting is uh, on the back here is... Let's have a look at the quilting. It's just every which way of quilting. I don't I wonder if you can see. I just started to sew and went off in one direction and and just quilted and quilted. I did big circles. Can you see? I did squares. If I got to a bit bored with one bit I'd just go in the other direction so that in fact you can't actually see uh, the quilting on the front but you can have a good old party on the back enjoying all the weird quilting I did on the back and I quilted it with three strands of embroidery thread. So here it is, I love it, it's terribly impractical <laughs> uh, in terms of it being a washable quilt, it's not really, not with that wool blanket inside there but I think I was just so impatient I just wanted to get on and, and not have to worry about buying wadding and stuff so I just got on with it and quilted it with what I had. The border I like, um, it's got this yellow, it's got this yellow edge here with a little flash of one of the colours in, a little bit of a border here and then this pink border all the way around the outside. So on, on balance I absolutely love it. It's the most, um, it's a crazy piece. <laughs> But it sits on my sofa upstairs in this bedroom here and makes me very, very happy. So what I thought we would do then, I thought we would make a piece along the same line. So 12 years ago when I made this, let's see if I can remember how I did it. I'll put it back on the sofa now. really interesting box that I've just found upstairs. Uh, I, first of all I like to take these boxes and cover them over with paper uh, from uh, old books. But inside this box, this is I've just um, found there, this is all the G's Bend stuff uh, and this is a postcard book that I bought at the time uh, which is, I've never used the postcards, I just like it as a, a little book. So this is a nice uh, reference um, to look at, to see what it is I mean by all these geometric lines that are none of them matched up. They're all pretty mismatched and strange and curious colours put together. These are all full size quilt tops. That's jeans. And that's, that's baseball jerseys apparently. <laughs> Who knew? So these blocks of bold lines and colours and so on and this kind of thing which is it's none of this has any respecter of geometry <laughs> it all just fits together without any accurate angles but it does fit together that one's amazing just two colours 
I really like how that one looks. That's the one from the front cover, I think. Now, this is where I start getting excited. This then, so whoever pieced this one, she put all these lovely blue and white bits together. And again, you know, you can see, can't you? If you were making this in a conventional quilting way, you would make them all the same, you'd make them all line up. We'd be very proud of our points all matching, but they don't here. And she got it to this size. This is my thinking, I'm surmising. And she thought, oh, that's not very big. So she just clobbered all this lot around the edges, she just added it all on. <laughs> I really love how that one looks. Fantastic bold colours. And now here we have a sort of log cabin block. But the way that this one's put together, you know, if I was making a log cabin, and I have made a log cabin in the past, we would make sure that all the uh, all the angles met and they're all very beautiful. And look, this one, it's almost like she's made all the log, the individual blocks. And then she's thought, ah, oh, can't we bother with that? And just throw them together any old way. But they do look fabulous. I love how they look. That was another riot for the senses. That's just bold, big pieces of colour stitched together and probably uh, stitched into uh, a lot like a whole cloth would be. There's another one that's got this central panel and then a load of jeans all the way around the outside. So those two weights would be quite different, wouldn't they? Doesn't seem to matter to these girls. And here's another one that's, uh, I think it's a log cabin block. But the block might be log cabin, but there's nothing about that that says log cabin. Crazy. In a good way, I think. It's very hard to do this improv quilting uh, uh, like that. It's hard to unplan something. Again, another bit of riotous colour going on there. Mismatched shapes. I think we're coming towards the end now. Yeah, that's the last of it. Okay then, so that's my G's Bend postcard book that inspired me to start looking at this. And I haven't been in this uh, box for the longest time, but here's some, well, 2007. Here's some of the fabric and some of the piecing that I did that was trying to emulate some of the patterns that I saw and these are some of the leftovers. In the bottom of that box then I found this brown piece of fabric that I'd made at the same time. I was experimenting with all sorts of bits and pieces of scraps so I thought um, I would choose this one. It's quite small. What is it? 18 inches by 12 inches. I've speeded all this, these bits of film up a bit. <laughs> Text from my brother. <laughs> and um, speeded all these bits and pieces up so that we can see what it is I plan to do with these little bits of um, fabric. Now the way that I'm doing this, I'm just putting them together so that no two pieces are the same next to each other and I'm just scrappily sewing them together. Sewing them and sewing them together. I didn't have any idea in mind at all what I was going to do with this but I just thought as an experiment to show you what I did when I made that big quilt that I might make this. Come on. Okay then so as I say, it's ever so slightly speeded up uh, so that we don't have to sit through me watching sewing this in real time. So I just cut and sewed bits on uh, in a random way. Because all the colours are pretty similar anyway, it all looks okay. Although weird. Now, you know, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know how much I like nesting seams. No nesting seams here. 
nothing nesting here. It's all a bit of a mess. <laughs> so I stitched and sewed and pressed and the iron was on the whole time. And you can see that this little cat here had taken up residence on the ironing board because the iron was nice and warm. So I'm squaring it up now and at this point I've decided what I'm going to make with it. So I'll stop this little recording now and I'll tell you all about it. Halfway through making this I decided what I was going to do with it. <laughs> it's the same colour as you Norma. Look. Come on, no. Oh, you come. Now, this box that I've opened up and I'm sewing from is about 12 years old. This bag here is probably about the same age. I bought this bag about the same time, intending to make these, not out of this GZ Bendy type fabric, but just anyway. So what's in here then? What's in here is crushed walnut shells and a little box to scoop them up in. Crushed walnut shells. I bought these because I was going to make some pin cushions to sell in the little shop that I had then. I maybe made one or two. But now I'm going to make this browny sort of fabricy thing into a pincushion stuffed with walnut shells. Walnut shells keep the pins very very sharp. Uh, they don't dull them and so I'm going to make this little, I've made this little bag here but I'm going to sew it together like that so that it'll be that sort of triangular shape. So let's fill it with walnut shells, eh? So I was doing some sewing at the weekend and I ran out of um, one of the fabrics that I need. This is a quilt commission that I'm making. And so I've had to cease production on that. But while I was working on it, I ordered some new pins because after a while your pins get a little bit blunt or rusty, don't they? They can't go on forever. So I ordered some new pins and my thinking is that they can go in my lovely new pin cushion made out of the scraps of fabric that I've had in my that box there for about 12 years. I like how it's come together. It looks a little bit messy. It'll be really easy to find on the table because it's nice and big. But now what I have to do is sew in this top edge here. That's the seam and it's going to line up with, there is a seam there, it's going to line up with that seam there. And then when my new pins come, I bought um, yellow head pins when my new pins come, they can live in this pin cushion, which makes me very happy. Now I've just got to be careful not to spill walnut shells all over the place. They use crushed walnut shells in some industry or other. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, what but I, I didn't buy it from a craft suppliers, this bag of um, shells. I bought it um, from... I don't know, some industrial suppliers. It's so long ago now, I can't even remember when it was. And that then <laughs> is a nice way to have used up some of that fabric. I've still got loads more, haven't I? This is a very easy shape to do. I wonder if there's actually too many walnut shells in there. No, that'll be fine. And then the pins will stick in there beautifully and stay sharp. Well, 
but pleased with that. I'll do the hand stitching and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. So I'm hoping the extra fabric I ordered will arrive today so I can get back on with the quilt commission that I'm doing, which is due at the end of August. I just ran out of a little bit of fabric, it's annoying, but I'm doing it to a particular colourway, so it was important that I got the right stuff. I can't find my thimble. I've put it in the pocket of something I was wearing. Annoying. Well, it's been really nice to have a little trip down memory lane there <laughs> to um, remember making that quilt. This is coming together fine. I'm just doing a very simple stitch. Just taking a bite out of that side and a bite out of that side. You won't be able to see it, it's in brown thread and it's a pretty scrappy thing anyway. Right. Okay guys, I'm at the end of this. I've done a really, really sturdy hand, sit, hand stitch on here. Really sturdy. And then a big tie off at the end. So I'm going to tie it off by looping through the thread a couple of times which kind of makes a knot. I do not want this to come undone. Loop it through, but then I'm going to bury the thread because it's a pincushion. I can just take the thread down, down, down as far as I can reach with the needle and just come out here like that. Snip that little thread there and that nice long piece of thread now will stay inside the pincushion. I now have this fantastic pincushion, which will keep my pins nice and sharp. Thank you for watching and thank you for uh, subscribing and liking and thumbs upping. All of those things help. Um, it, they help the channel to grow uh, and it's growing nice and slowly and organically. I like that. So, but if uh, apparently if you do the thumbs ups, the likes, the shares, the comments, YouTube takes more notice for some reason. <laughs> because I know some of you have found the channel because YouTube have recommended it and that's nice. So, <laughs> pincushion, sorted. See you next time. Thanks for watching.